Hello, this is Marcus Giuliano from MarcusG.TV. I'm a chef on a mission, a mission for nutrition. And I haven't had a post uh, on this uh, on my blog in, in probably in a good month or so. Uh, the, my restaurant is ex has been extremely busy in the month of December. Every Christmas day, if you do follow what I do here, and every Christmas day, we give away free meals, no questions asked. We open it as a soup kitchen. We've done it for eight full continuous years every Christmas day. So that's my Christmas with my family here at the restaurant. And this year was a record-breaking number. Uh, we fed 505 people this year, so hats off to all of our volunteers, our donations. And that's really what's been part of keeping me busy for the whole month of December, plus all the holiday parties we do and every, at, here at the restaurant, at my restaurant, so that's good. But I'm kind of back in the blogging mode. It's the day after Christmas. Uh, I got myself a Christmas present, Sweet and Raw Pies. Uh, I'm really excited about this book here. I just got this. It's all on, on raw desserts. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. You can see that there's a bunch of uh, notes in here already. My daughter went through here. and My daughter wants to probably make every other pie that's in here. So we uh, have a game plan going to make some of these beautiful raw pies here. So uh, this is an awesome, awesome book. Julia Corbett. Uh, it's uh, sweet and raw. It's on pies. On raw pies made out of nuts and seeds and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people think that Australian beef is a safer beef because of uh, the grass-fed aspect and their humane treatment. And that's true for the most part. Australia has much more different production of beef than we do here in America. But keep in mind that Australia does have growth hormones in their beef, just like we do here in America. And we really don't think of that because we think of oh, Australia as, as, like I said, as a cleaner beef. So Coles, C-O-L-E-S, Coles Supermarket, the giant supermarket in Australia, uh, has their New Year's resolution. And Jamie, what is their New Year's resolution? This is a great article I found online about them. It looks like their New Year's resolution is to ban beef that's been pumped with growth hormones. Yes, so beef in the supermarket in Coles, as of, as of New Year's Day, no more beef in the whole supermarket will have growth hormones in it. Congratulations, Coles. It's because of stores like that, of Whole Foods and other stores that step up to the plate because consumers demand it. Now, they got this through a whole poll and everything. So, Jamie, what does this article say specifically? Okay, it says, um, it is an Australian first that has sent shockwaves through the meat industry. And why would it, why would it put shocks through the meat industry, Marcus? What, explain? Well, because the, the beef officials are probably getting an uproar because they don't, they rely upon growth hormones to get more production, uh, more yield, and, you know, and there's, of course, a whole business behind the scenes for antibiotics, for hormones, for all the stuff, the pharmaceutical stuff that needs to go into cattle production, just like any industry. There's a whole industry behind an industry that relies upon this. So if they stop doing this, there's going to be fallout further down the line on those producers that are raising more than corn and grain or grass to feed cattle. Which it then goes into talking about one of the downsides sides of, um, of this happening, and it says industry experts predict higher beef prices as more customers demand hormone-free meat, which makes up about half of all beef sold in Australia. So it does seem to be that there will be some repercussions from it. Right, so they say the prices are going to go up, which, right. you know, if we paid the price of what natural food costs to begin with, it, what real food costs, everything is subsidized. Everything is pumped, homogenized, subsidized. We're not really paying over the true cost of food. When you look, go to the grocery store and you can buy an organic broccoli, costs more than chicken. There's something wrong with that in there. You know, it's just, it's not a good equation. But they're saying that it is going to raise the price of, of beef. And now, the statistic you said is interesting 50% of beef in Australia is already hormone free. In America, we're not even close to 50% hormone-free beef in America. Not even close, close, close. Now, some of the industry experts are, 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 are making some alarms there. The bottom of the article says, you know, that they're making some other claims there, too. What are those claims that they're making? Um, it, it might be damaging to the beef industry. Um, What's damaging to the beef industry is the hormones and the bad reputation and the things that they do because there's a lot of... of of side effects from putting hormones into beef. And there's study after study after study, everything from the manure of beef that gets hormones, goes into the ecosystem, gets into the groundwater. Uh, there's been a study that girls reach puberty much quicker. Um, there's also study on, on boys. Um, this article mentioned a study, what was the study on boys? Oh, you don't have that, I have that on my side here, Jamie. Um, some of the, some of the, I mean, there's effects after effects. You could just Google effects of growth, um, promotants in beef and come up with all kinds of stuff 
uh, I mean, and with with legitimate studies and links. What is uh, the reason, Marcus, that farmers actually use hormone growth um, for more production? Because okay. they've been sold the bill of goods, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And I'll show you they've been approved since what the 70s. It says 79. Since 79, they've, they've approved it. Now, you know, the the supermarkets but they've been realize, banned by the European Union. Good in point. 1988. Right. So the European Union does not accept it now. Here's, here's an interesting thing because we were talking to a gentleman that we know, a friend of ours from Argentina, who's in the beef industry, and he told me this last summer, he goes, Marcus, if I were to use growth hormones or these antibiotics, all this, any stuff, he goes, I would be blacklisted from the beef industry in Argentina. He goes, I can never produce beef again. He goes, they are so strict. European, the European countries are so strict as well. They don't want any of this stuff. It just seems like us... England and now here in Australia that, that we're just stupid enough to fall into this trap of of buying because this is the democracy we've been sold about oh it's a free country we can do what we want and there's many opportunities and you know and so you show up to a farmer's door and say I have got a great opportunity for you I can increase increase your production which it's all about money. monetary it's all about money 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 so an industry creates the problem so for instance like um, cholesterol Cholesterol is a massive hoax that nobody really questions their doctor about. Massive, massive hoax. And there's books written left and right. There's thousands of studies out there that you don't need cholesterol medication to the extent they're giving it. So what happens is the drug company starts the problem because they have the product. So in this case, the, the hormone company says, okay, we have hormones to grow beef. There's really no problem to begin with. You don't need to put hormones in beef. There's no problems with it, but they've created a product. So now they have to create the problem. The problem is, to the farmer, you're not producing enough beef. If you spend XYZ, $1,000, whatever it is, you're gonna be able to produce more beef. So here's the problem. The problem is you're not producing enough. There's no, there's really no problem here. We, your, Europe is doing fine with this. I mean, when you look at John Robbins' book, uh, Diet for a New America, Food Revolution, this Food Revolution book, awesome book, he tells you, I think he quotes in there, 25,000 million pounds of antibiotics are used in American livestock. In Denmark, zero. So these other countries are doing it just fine. So we just need to remodel the system to be able to produce. We have, we have plenty of resources, we have plenty of land, and I've got to tell you, we don't need to eat as much beef as we actually eat here in America or anywhere, um, you know, in Australia, wherever, especially Argentina, some of those countries, they rely heavily on meat. You don't need as much meat as you're eating. So there are no really issues besides the issues that were created by the so-called industry experts who are looking after their industry. Anything else this article says, Jamie? It just says the goal of food, the food industry should be to produce food as Mother Nature intended. That's what the goal is. Little additives. Little possible. additives. Because the bottom line is we're all affected by how food is manipulated and twisted and We and have turned. power as consumers to make sure that this is happening. Exactly nah. right. That's a great way to end this. You have the power to speak up and say something. When you go to a restaurant, when you go to a grocery store, when you write a letter, when you post a comment on somebody's Facebook page, uh, whether it's a big company like Walmart or something, when you post comments that people, other people can see, your comment goes a long way. Discussions on the web, these uh, forums, all this stuff really, really helps. So no matter how you get your comment out there, it really helps. Now, Zagat, the big restaurant survey company, when they released their last issue uh, this last year, the one big thing on their survey was people want local, people want hormone-free, people want organic, people want antibiotic-free, people want more natural food. The consumers want it. I know in my own restaurant here, our restaurant, our business keeps growing and growing, and people drive out of their way to obtain these kinds of meats. We have a lot of people that come to the restaurant that say, I would never meet, eat meat anywhere else because I know the sourcing you do for your meat or for your fish or for whatever it is. I think it's just really important for people to speak up. And to speak to, up. To say and to understand what they're eating because most people don't understand what they're most eating. Most people have no idea. what no idea. And because the impression of you're driving an hour to a market that has supposedly fresh food, I mean, I, I see it all the time and, and it, it's just not the case. Relatives of ours went to this market and, and an hour away to buy all this food for the holidays. and. And, you know, they came back with, I don't know what they, they really came back because they don't really know. They just, because you're just driving, you're going to this market where things are cheap and, and you have fish counters lined up and everything. You, they're you thinking think, they're getting a better You're thinking your perception and it's really not. It's just not. It's the same stuff. It's the same stuff that's frozen that's sitting in, in these mass-produced warehouses and farms, you know. It, it just, it drives me crazy. But that's why I'm here because I'm a chef on a mission for nutrition. And congratulations to the cold supermarkets in Australia. Put the pressure on them there. 
uh, in Australia. Put the pressure on other places. Put the pressure on everywhere. Put the pressure on here in America. Uh, but we have some viewers. I mean, I get I get emails from Australia, from England, from Spain, from Germany. Um, there's a gentleman, Joe, in Germany that emails all the time and comments in the videos. So wherever you are, put the pressure on. Um, what are your uh, What are your resolutions in 2011? The year's coming up. New brand new year. Perfect time to make changes. Congratulations to Coles for their New Year's resolution.